And if you have like two blocks or two like book like things, if you don't, it's totally fine. Or if you have like a pillow or a blanket that you can use, um, we'll do pigeon. So that'll definitely be helpful. Um, but yeah, cool. We're going to just start seated. So you can start in whatever comfortable seat feels good. I'm going to sit up in your asana on the block, but if you want to sit cross-legged, you can on a pillow or anything. Cool. And then once you've Set yourself up, just wiggle yourself around so that you're really sit it, sitting up tall on your sit bones. And then if it feels comfortable, you can bring your eyes to a close or just let your gaze become soft. So you aren't looking at the screen anymore. You're just letting your eyes rest for a little bit. And then just begin to notice your breath. Notice if it's short or if it's already long or where the breath is going, try to guide the breath deep down into your low belly on each inhale. Just begin to notice where you are in space at this moment. And we are about to hit the winter solstice, which is one of my favorite days of the year. And I'm happy to go into more detail why afterwards, but Paige knows. But that means we're really getting into winter. So we're at the, we're at a season change. And in winter, there's a sense of emptiness, but at the same time, it's a big point of reflection. And the element in Chinese medicine that's associated with winter is water. And when we look in water, in a lake, ocean, anywhere, we can see our reflection. So for the next hour, for the rest of 2021 and the rest of this winter season, we can look back at ourselves, but at what's happened in the past spring, summer, fall, that got us to this winter point before we use all that we've reflected to move on into spring to grow something new. So with keeping winter and reflection in mind, there's no judgment or anything like that when we're doing yoga, we're just noticing how our bodies are feeling and how the poses are making us feel. So for the next hour, try to keep that in mind. We'll bring our hands, press your right hand on your heart and your left hand on top of it. And we'll take one breath all together just to start practice. We'll meet on empty, so exhale all your air out. And then take a big inhale through the nose. Holding it at the top. And then big sigh, exhale out the mouth. Letting your hands drop. Eyes can gently flutter open. And then you'll move whatever you're sitting on and come into an all fours position. So hands will be underneath your shoulders, knees will be underneath your hips. Take your time getting yourself up in this tabletop so you really see your right angles below you that are holding you up. And once you're there, we'll take some cats and cows, inhaling as you arch and exhaling as you round. And take these really slow at first. In winter, we like to move more slowly. So you can imagine you're moving through molasses. It's less sunlight in winter. So the energy from our environment is sometimes not always as strong as when we're in summer, we wanna go out, we need all of our energy and do things. So moving more slowly in winter just comes more naturally. But then at the same time, it's good to switch it up. So see if you can speed it up a little bit. 
finding that balance between fire and water in these cats and cows. Notice how you're pressing down on all 10 fingers. And take this for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come back to center. And then from here, we're going to do my favorite thing. You're just going to flip your wrists around 180 degrees. So the backs of your wrists are now facing towards the front. And if that feels like too much, you can just flip your hands out 90 degrees to right and left. And then from there, take big or small circles with your wrists or around your wrists with your hips. And just notice where you're looking. Try to look down and out in front of you. You can circle your head around too if you want to get that involved. Yeah, really nice. Make the movement your own. Notice how you're pressing all 10 toes down on the ground. See if you can feel the top of your pinky toe pressing down on the mat or the carpet. And then take circles to the left. And this is super good for all of us that are sitting at computers typing all day because our wrists are rarely flipped and they're always in one position. So this is good to get the joints of our wrists a little bit more open. Slight bend in your elbows if you notice you're locking them out. Take one more circle to the left and then come back to center. And to flip our hands back around the normal way, you're just gonna take a swim stroke forward with the right hand and flip your hand around. And take a swim stroke forward with the left hand and flip your hand around. Great. From here, you're gonna place your palms about a palm print in front of where they are. Tuck your toes under, and then by lifting your hips up to the sky, bring yourself up into your first down dog. Pedal it out a little bit. Give yourself a little bit of movement, and then find some visible stillness, knowing that you're pressing down to lift up. There's a slight bend in your knees, and if you've never done down dog with the bent knees before, try it today. Take one more breath in your down dog. And then step your right foot forward about a footprint, just so that the whole foot is, the whole right foot is down on the ground and your left heel is still lifted. Bend your knee still slightly and stick your butt up to the sky. Take one more breath here, just getting into the hamstring. And exhale, step your right foot back. Now step your left foot forward. So just giving our hamstring a little bit of love. And if you don't want to do a down dog, you can just do a seated forward fold. One more breath. And then step your left foot back. One more foot thing. On your next inhale, flip your right toes over so you're on the top of your right foot. Knees are still slightly bent, sticking your butt up to the sky. Notice what that feels like. And then untuck it. So the ball of your foot's on the ground. Same thing, left side, tuck the toes here on the top of the foot. Wrap your armpits in towards your heart, palms are pressing down, and then untuck the toes. Take one more little pedal, sway from side to side, and then bring your body forward and through to a plank pose. So use this plank to measure it out. Notice where your arms are, notice how your legs are engaged. One more cycle of breath here, gazes down and out. And then place your knees back down onto the ground and find that all fours position again. Cool. So if you have blocks, feel free to use them here and you can place them underneath your hands. Otherwise, coming up onto fingertips is perfect. And then you're going to step your right foot out to the right. So you're Right foot's to the right in line with your knee. Have a slight bend in your right knee and then take some circles with your hips again. So now we're just getting into our right leg and our hips. Notice where you're looking. Try to look out. And I keep saying that because we want to look out towards our potential even while we are reflecting. And then take circles to the left with your hips. 
you can bend more. You can almost come back into like a half child's pose too, if that feels good or fun. Maybe one more cycle of breath and circle. Then come back to center. And then you're gonna turn your right toes up to the sky and flex your right foot. And then walk your hands. If you have your blocks, feel free to bring them with you or just on fingertips so that you're framing your right leg. Yeah, and then you probably feel this really in your hamstring. You can give yourself a little sway, rocking the toes from right to left. And then you can just let your head and torso drop over your leg. Yeah, nice guys. Cool. Take one more breath here. Slight bend in the knee. And then place your right hand on the inside of your right foot and walk yourself back to the front of your mat. Cool. From here, you're gonna tuck your left toes, lift your left knee, come back into this weird triangular down dog, and then step your right foot to meet your left in a normal down dog. Yeah. Inhale, bring your body forward and through to a tuck-toed up dog. So your legs stay engaged, toes are tucked. And then exhale, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Inhale, bring your body forward and through to a plank. Exhale, place the knees down. Come back to your all fours position. Great, we're gonna just do the other side. So come up onto fingertips. If you have your blocks, you can use the blocks. And then step your left foot out to the left so you're in this gate pose. Great, and then take circles to the left. Yeah, this is really good for our hips and the outer line of our left leg. Feel free to circle your head around or give it a few shakes. You can always close your eyes too in any of these poses and go inward, but also see how that affects your balance and then take circles to the right. Notice how you're pressing all five toes of your right foot down to keep you stable. One more breath. Coming back to center, if your hands are on blocks, walk your blocks with you. Lift your left toes up to the sky and then walk yourself over, over, over to the left to come. Stretch over your left leg. Great. Once you're there, you can wiggle out your shoulders, wiggle out your head, just everything, let everything release down. You can sway from right to left. Just take a few breaths here. Noticing where you're guiding the breath, really try to bring it to your low belly. One more cycle. Deep exhale. Left hand comes on the inside of the left foot. Walk yourself back to face the front of your mat. Tuck the right toes. Keep the whole sole of the left foot down and come into that weird down dog. I'm going to switch to be the normal side of my mat. And then step your left foot back to meet your right. Find your dog. And whenever you're ready, you can take your inhale up dog. Exhale down dog. Legs stay engaged. Beautiful. Take a few more petals out in this down dog. Cool. One more cycle of breath. And then begin to walk your feet up towards your hand. Hands, both hands. So you come to a forward fold at the front of your mat. And you can find your feet at hips with distance by measuring out to fists in between your arches, or you can even widen your feet a little bit just to give you more space. Once your feet are set up, you can just let your head completely drop. Imagine there's a magnet on the crown of your head, connecting your top of your head to the floor. And rock your hips from right to left. Looks so nice, everyone. And then bring that movement so it's a little bit smaller. 
then find your left fingertips right underneath your face and reach your right arm up to the sky so you're in a nice twist. Yeah. Exhale, swim the right hand back down, replace it with the left, then lift your left arm up. And exhale, swim. So we're going for a little swim. Shocking since I've talked about water already. But just keep inhaling and exhaling as you're swimming your arms forward so that you can get a nice little opening in your shoulder in the front of the pec. And all that good stuff. We're so used to rounding over and this helps broaden our chest. Take one more in either direction. And then let everything just gently hang over once you're there, there's no rush. And then as slow as you can, you're gonna slowly, slowly roll yourself up to stand until you're standing on two feet, stacking vertebra on top of vertebra. Give your shoulders a little roll forward and back. And then hook your thumbs up overhead and reach up super high to the sky. Cool. From here, inhale, reach up and over to the right. Looking up underneath your left armpit and exhale, come back to center. Inhale, up and over to the left. So just take these as if you're stretching for the first time in the morning when you just got out of bed and you really want to get that length back into your side body. But inhale, lengthen up and over like you're going over a beach ball. Exhale and come back to center on your own time. Take one more to either side. And then lift your fingers up super, super tall and let them completely drop like you just dropped a really heavy bag on the ground. Nice. Close your eyes for just a moment as you're standing here on two feet and really notice what it's like to stand on all parts of your feet. One more deep inhale. One more exhale. Inhale, open your eyes, reach your arms up, press palms together overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Place your hands back down and then step or gently hop yourself back to your downward facing dog. Cool. From here, you're going to place your knees down so they're right in line with one another. Untuck the toes and bring yourself into a child's pose. Typically, I usually say to do a wide knees child's pose, but we're going to keep our knees together because we're going to set ourselves up for moon salutation. So you can follow along. We'll go slowly the first side and then we'll speed it up for the second round. But your arms are right in front of you. You're in this little tight little ball. You're going to bring your hands back so that they cup your heels so that you're in what we call seed pose. Your forehead is just in towards your knees. Take a breath here, and then we'll get moving. Inhale, reach your arms up, lift your torso up and reach your arms up to the sky. Yeah. And then forward fold over yourself again. Inhale, bring your body forward and through. Tuck your toes, come into a tuck toed up dog. And then exhale, bring your hips back and up down with facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot to your right thumb, our first lunge. Place your back knee down, keep your toes tucked, and then reach your arms up. Place your hands back down, lift your back knee, and step your left foot up to meet your right. Inhale, place your hands on your shins, lengthen out your spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach your arms up, press palms together overhead. Exhale, bring your hands in prayer in front of your chest. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold over your legs. Inhale, step your right foot back. Exhale, place your back knee down and tuck the back toes. Reach your arms forward, out and up, lunge on the left side. Place your fingertips back down to frame your front foot. Lift your back knee, step your left knee back 
to your down dog or left leg back. Bring your body forward and through back to that tuck toe up dog. Place your knees down, untuck the toes, and come back into your seat pose. Oh, that rhymed. That brought me joy. Take another breath here in your seat pose before we do the other side. You know what you're getting yourself into. Inhale, lift your arms up, lift your torso up, reach up to the sky. Exhale, like the gravity from the moon is pulling you forward. Bring your body forward and through to that tuck toe up dog. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward, place your back knee down. Lift your arms up and then place them back down to frame your front foot. Bring your right foot up to meet your left. And then just let yourself hang over. Inhale, extend your spine, hands on shins. Exhale, let your body fold. Inhale, reach your arms up, press palms together overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to prayer. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step your left foot back. Come into your low lunge, place your back knee down. Reach your arms up. Exhale, place your hands back down. Tuck the toes, lift the knee. Step yourself back into your downward facing dog. Roll your body forward and through to your up dog. Place the knees down, untuck the toes. Bring yourself back to your seed pose. Wow, it's like I memorized a script or something. Take another breath here. Exhaling really deeply. We'll take one more round to either side. And if you want to speed up and go faster than I'm speaking, feel free. But I will still guide us. Don't worry. Lift your arms up. Lift your torso up. Forward fold over your legs. Bring your body forward and through to that tuck toe up dog. Hips come up, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward to your lunge, place your back knee down. Reach your arms up and place them back down. Lift your back knee, step your left foot up to meet your right. Take a breath. Place your hands on your shins, extend your spine. Exhale, bring yourself back down. Inhale, reach your arms up, press palms together overhead. Bring your hands down to prayer. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step the right foot back. Exhale, place the knee back down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, come down. Inhale, lift the back knee up. Step yourself back into your down dog. Exhale, come forward and through to your up dog. Place the knees down, take another inhale if you need, and bring yourself back to that child's pose and then a seat pose. Grabbing for your heels. Really good. Last time. Inhale, lift your arms up, reach up super, super tall. Exhale, forward fold over your legs. Inhale, come forward and through to that tuck toed up dog. Exhale, lift the hips up. Inhale, step your left foot forward. Exhale, place the back knee down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bring them down. Inhale, step your right foot up to meet your left. Exhale, forward fold over your legs. Inhale, hands on shins, lengthen out the spine. Exhale, let your torso drop. Inhale, reach your arms up, press palms together overhead. Exhale, bring your hands to prayer. Inhale, arms come back up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step your left foot back. Place the back knee down. Inhale again, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring them back down. Inhale, lift the back knee, step yourself back to your down dog. Exhale. Inhale, come into your upward facing dog. Exhale, place the knees down, untuck the toes, bring yourself back into your seat pose. 
I should write a it was the night before Christmas poem with that. You can stay in your child's pose for a second. You can let your arms come out in front of you. If you want to widen your knees and come into a widey child's pose, you can do that. Nice. Just take a moment to listen to how your body feels and just got the blood flowing, which is always really nice. One more cycle of breath. Press your hands down into the ground and bring yourself back up into a downward facing dog. From here, lift your right leg up, down dog split. Exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. So coming back into that lunge. For a moment, just place your back knee down and untuck the back toes. Really try to see if you can have all five toes pressing down and find that connection between your armpit and your knee. From there, when you find that connection between your armpit and your knee, you're gonna take some circles with your knee in your armpit. Super weird, I know, but it really is good for the lymph nodes that are in your armpit to get moving. And what I like to think of happening here is you never, you never, maybe you do, but you likely will not want to go into like a stagnant pond that has all of those little flies buzzing around it. Instead, you want to channel your inner Pocahontas and be in one of those waterfall flowing rivers. So that's what we're making our armpits right now. Take one circle in the other direction just to give it a little variety, groove it around. And then place your right fingertips back down. See if you can, can keep that connection between your armpit and your knee. And then tuck your toes, lift your back knee, and step your left foot in just a little bit to get the whole sole of the left foot down. Left toes are facing up on the left diagonal. And then see if you can straighten out your right leg a little bit more to come into a pyramid pose. And if you have blocks, this is also a great place to come bring your hands on blocks so that your back stays super long in this pose. Really nice, guys. You can let your head drop. Take one more deep inhale and exhale. Then back into your right knee. And then this time with your hands off the ground or off the block and bring yourself up into a warrior one. So the purpose of warrior one is finding your hips as square as possible. You have a right, a nice strong 90 degree angle in your right knee. And the whole back part of your left foot is pressing down. So I just instinctively put my hands on my hips to try to make sure that they're both facing forward. You can try that too. Otherwise, to enable yourself, I like to widen my feet a little bit more so I have more space to make sure my hips are square. Arms are reaching up to the sky. One more breath. And then if you can keep your arms super long, we're just gonna transfer ourselves into a warrior three. But if you wanna use blocks, then you can just place the blocks there. You're gonna bend more into your right knee, lift your left leg up off the ground, still flexed, then find your balance in your warrior three here. If you wanna grab blocks, you can always place your hands on blocks. Left hip is wrapping down. Take one more cycle of breath, really nice. And then step your left foot down to meet your right. Let yourself just hang and dangle over your legs like you're an ornament on a tree. Really good. Really just let yourself drop. Yeah, you can grab for opposite elbows or take any sort of arm variation if that feels nice here too. Have a slight bend in your knees always in these forward folds. Cool. One more breath. One more exhale. Hands come down and gently step or hop yourself back to your downward facing dog. Inhale if you want, come to a tuck toe up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up, down dog split, hips are square. Exhale, step your left foot to your left thumb. 
Place your back knee down, untuck the back toes, find all five toes pressing down, even that pinky, and then hook your left armpit on top of your left knee and take those circles or wiggles around there. And I don't even know who really made this up or how it came to be, but it's a really good one for giving love to our armpits, which I don't think is something people really say, but it just reminded me of all of those like Hallmark movie titles. And I think it'd be so funny to see the plot of love in our armpits. Okay. One more circle, give yourself a little wiggle. And then place your left fingertips back down, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, hop your right foot in so that your right toes are facing up on the diagonal, hips are still square over your legs, you're in your pyramid, see if you can straighten your left leg a little bit more, and then let your torso just drop over your legs. Super good for the backs of the legs, these forward folds are always really good to give our hips and our hamstrings and these really large muscle groups more love and help. One more breath here. Start bending into the left knee and then reach your arms forward, out and up, coming into your warrior one. Full left knee is bent. Back part of the right foot is still pressing down on the mat, so you're not lifting up your back heel. Feet can be as wide as they need. It should feel like they're on train tracks and not on a tight rope. Then your arms are reaching up to the sky. And you can try your stance in a few different ways just to see what feels better. Take a few more breaths, really reaching up through the fingertips, reaching up through the side of the waist. Imagine someone pulling you up and lifting you up. One more cycle of breath. And as you exhale, continue to bend into that front knee and lift your back leg up to come into warrior three. Wow, I'm really rhyming unintentionally all over the place today. It's great. You can have a slight bend in your left knee. Your right hip is wrapping down. Back leg is super strong and engaged. Arms are engaged or on blocks or whatever arm variation you're working with right now. One more deep inhale and exhale. And then just step your right foot down next to your left, at least side hips with distance and give yourself that release and sweat. Really good. Let your head completely drop. Yeah, nice map. Paige, you can drop your head even more. Yeah, yes. One more exhale, place your hands down and step yourself back to your downward facing dog. Cool. From here, once again, inhale, lift the right leg up, down dog split. Exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb. Great. So you might want blocks again for this, you might not. Place your back knee down, untuck the back toes, find that same wonderful stance of armpit right on top of knee, knee on top of ankle in your lunge. And then you're just gonna see if you can lift your knee up off the ground. So using the energy that's pressing down on the top of your left foot, see if you can lift your back leg up. Might feel a little bit weird, You'll get a nice little stretch in the front of the left hip and then place it back down. Take this a few more times just on your own, testing it out. And you can always put your hands on blocks and see if that helps you. Your hands can help you here. Great. Take one more little up and down and then find your hands on your front knee. Now you're going to try it without your hands. If you have like a knee thing and you're like, I don't want to do this, don't do it. <laughs> but see if you can now have enough energy in the entire back foot to lift up your back leg. Stay here for a breath. 
and then place your knee back down. One more time, you can keep your arms like this or you can try a different arm variation, but lifting up the back leg, take a breath, and then bring yourself back down. Nice, really in our legs, really in our hips. You can come back onto fingertips. Oh my gosh, what is it with me today? Okay, then you're gonna heel toe your right foot over to the left, and then just set yourself up in pigeon that way. Yeah, so if your foot's gonna come diagonally in, your right knee's on the entire right side of your mat, and I highly recommend grabbing a pillow or blanket and stuffing that underneath your hips. If I took a couch cushion off of these couches, my mom will yell at me, so I can't do that, but I will pretend I have one. <laughs> Great. From there, set yourself up, hips are square, and then you can just bring yourself over. If you have blocks, you can always place a block underneath your chest and then underneath your forehead. And then really start to let your entire body melt over your hips and your shin and your legs. Coming back to those deep breaths that you found in the beginning, really noticing your breath. Knowing that this is one pigeon pose of probably many you've done in your life. So just noticing that. And really on each exhale, see if you can release a little bit more tension from places that don't need it, like your jaw or your shoulders or your toes or your fingers. Yeah, and you can wiggle yourself out of that tension. Taking some moments here in silence to feel what you're feeling. Take one more deep inhale and one more deep exhale. And if you've used props, you can move your block off, blocks off to the side walk your hands back up, sit on your right hip and swing that left leg around so that your right foot still stays in this like tree pose like position. So we're setting ourselves up for Janu Shirsasana. So if you are sitting up on a blanket or have a blanket, you can still keep that there. I don't, so I'm a bad demo, but sit up super tall, have a slight bend in your left knee, and then just walk yourself forward over your leg. Doesn't matter how far you go, just see how far you can go. Your eyes can come to a close. Once again, noticing if there's any tension in an unnecessary place, like your shoulders or your face. I am loving class today. I can't believe I keep running. Thank God it's recorded. Take one more cycle of breath here. And then slowly, slowly begin to walk yourself back up. Straighten out your right leg in front of you and give both legs a little bit of a shake. Find a slight bend in both knees. Sit yourself up super tall and then walk yourself forward again, this time on both legs. And see as when you walk down, see if you can find that connection again between your armpits and your knees. So my feet are at hips width distance, they're not together. My feet are flexed up towards the sky. My knees are slightly bent and they're really coming right into my armpits. So I'm fitting myself, which is calming and comforting. Let your head completely drop. Take two more deep breaths. After your second exhale, begin to walk yourself back up. 
give your legs a shake. Cross one shin over the other, flip over onto all fours and come back into your downward facing dog. You can take an up dog into a down dog. Anything that feels good if you're craving a chaturanga, bless, feel free to do that, but I will never make that option. Then on your next inhale, lift your left leg up, down dog split, then step your left foot up to your left thumb. So you know we're going on this side to so put your back knee down, untuck the toes, really set yourself up for success by keeping your hips super square and all that allows all five toes to press down. You can be on fingertips or blocks and then see what it's like to lift that back leg. So gazing down and out. Yeah. Take a few more rounds. If you want to already go so that you're not using your hands, go for it. And just place one hand on top of the other on your left knee. But just take one or two more if you are using your hands. And notice how when you press down with the top of the right foot, your right hip kind of turns down a little bit more too. That's your body squaring off your hips out of necessity. And then take at least three and breathe in each hold with just using your legs. You can always try another arm variation. And then after you finish those three, You'll place your hands down. There's no rush if you want to go crazy and try something else. And then you'll heel toe your left foot to your right thumb and then just set it down so your right foot will kind of drag back. Your knee will come right behind your left wrist and will come into pigeon on the left. Set yourself up similarly to how you did on the other side. So you got a blanket, use a blanket. If you notice you might need more blankets on this side, do that. Lifting up tall, then gently walk yourself back down. You can have a block under your chest and a block under your forehead. And on this side, really think about spreading your entire back. So it's like you're spreading butter on toast. You can imagine there's someone pressing down on your left hip and your right shoulder and dragging that apart. And someone pressing down on your right hip and your left shoulder and dragging that apart. So you're creating so much more surface area for your body to flex down on, which creates a ton of space in your joints and makes you more mobile. This is also an amazing pose for your kidneys. And going back to the Chinese medicine analogy of life, in Chinese medicine, water is the element, element associated with winter and kidneys are the organ associated with winter. Kidneys do a lot for us with our water. But if you're ever feeling super stressed or overwhelmed, pigeon is a really good pose to help relax what's going on, relax the kidneys, give your kidneys a chance to recharge so that they can keep working for you when you go out of the yoga studio or you get off your yoga mat and keep doing things. One more breath. Now we may have been here a little bit longer than the other side. As you exhale, walk your hands back up, move the blocks, sit on your left side and swing your right leg around. Setting up for Janu Shushasana on this side. Right leg is slightly bent, left foot is pressing on the inner left thigh, sitting up super tall, and then walk yourself forward when you're ready. So we're getting some sense of asymmetry and symmetry when we do Janu Shirsasana and then we do a normal forward fold. 
just affects our hips, low back, legs a little bit differently. Let your head really drop, let the tension melt away like snow melting when it gets warm. Take one more inhale and one more exhale and walk yourself back up to sit, lengthen out your left leg and give it a little shake to both legs. Flex your feet again, slight bend in both knees, sit up super tall, and then you can walk yourself forward again. Yeah, nice. Beautiful, guys. Letting your knees come into your armpit so you can round with a little ball. Hands can come on feet, hands can be on the floor. And notice what happens over time as you're here. Does gravity help you get a little bit more contact between your legs and your upper body? Yeah, and take any little fidgets or wiggles that you want with your head or your shoulders. Take two more deep breaths here. After your second exhale, gently walk yourself back up. Give your legs a shake again. Cross your left shin over your right this time and come back into your downward facing dog. This is gonna be your last down dog. So if you wanna try anything, maybe you wanna try coming on top of both toes at once in your down dog, or you wanna try a chaturanga, or you want to do that up dog thing again or anything, go for it. Take one more breath. As you exhale, place your knees down, sit to one side and come lie down on your back. Sorry, not sorry. We're doing a little ab sequence first, which helps us balance the fire and water of winter. So your knees can come planted, your, knees, your feet can come planted down, knees are bent. Hands can come one on top of the other behind the base of your um, head and your neck. And you're gonna lift both knees up so they're in a tabletop position. So my knees are right on top of my hips. Feet can be flexed or pointed, whatever's more comfortable. Then lift your head up. From here, we're just gonna take alternating toe taps with our feet. So you're gonna tap your right foot to the ground and then your left, still lifting your head, neck and shoulders, gazing at your low belly, taking 10 on each side. I'm really bad at counting in yoga, but I trust you to count to 10 twice, which equals 20. And once you've done your 20, you can let your chest, neck, and head come back down, but keep your legs in the tabletop. And I'll just watch you guys to see when you stop moving because I have no idea what I'm counting. Yeah, really breathing, inhale and exhale. Keeping your whole low back on the ground. Wonderful. Okay. Take one or two more wherever you are and then lift your head, neck and shoulders back up and now take 10 with bringing both feet at the same time to the ground and back up. So this one, really make sure that your whole low back stays connected. So you're really using your abs and we keep our whole low back on the ground so that our back just stays safe. Don't wanna strain it. So just go as low as you can. I'll once again watch you for 
when you finish counting to 10, because I really can't count to 10. Once you finish your 10, you can let your head just completely drop and you can hug your knees in towards your chest. Give your knees a little walk, walk, rock and roll and wiggle. Cool. One more. Sorry. So you're going to keep your knees like this for now. Hands come back behind your neck. Lift your head up, and we're just going to take 10 bicycles. So left shoulder to left to right knee, right shoulder, left knee. And I know typically we say our elbow goes to our knee, but we really think of bringing the shoulder to the knee. However many, let's pretend we've all done five, four, three, two, one, and then we're done. Yay, bring your feet down. Then you can rock your knees from right to left or you can hug your knees in towards your chest. Cool. Bring your feet as wide as your mat and just let your knees knock into one another. So we'll come into constructive rest just for a moment. And then to end class, we, if a plow is in your practice, I highly recommend following through plow. But if plow is not in your practice, we're gonna, you're gonna end in a seated forward fold. And if you're like, Dana, I don't want to do that, you can always just do Shavasana. We are, there's a lot of freedom here. But if you want to come into plow, you're going to bring your knees back in. And then you're just going to lift your knees and your hips up over your head. Then let your knees kind of come up either side of your ears. I like reaching my arms back and up and find my feet in my hands. And then really find your knees coming into your armpits. Yeah. You can always, yeah, you can always keep your hands on your back. You could even stick a blanket right up in your upper or like wherever your back is, kind of use that as a kickstand if you're having trouble balancing there. And if you don't want to do plow, you can just come to a seated forward fold like we did before and really try to find that connection of your knees to your armpits. But if you're in plow, you're going to stay in plow for 20 breaths. My yoga teacher stays in plow for the number of breaths that she's old, like her age of breaths. But I'm not going to make us do that. So I made us do abs instead. <laughs> So yeah, wherever you are, the point of plow is to really go inward and keep yourself in a ball. So just keep following your breath. Same thing if you're in your forward fold, you're in a ball finding contact. Contact brings safety. You take these breaths as your own timer. So if you are like, I hate this, but I'm doing it because Dana said so, you can always breathe really fast. If you love this, then you can breathe as slow as you want to. Just making sure that when you come out of it, just come out really, really slowly and really feel each vertebra roll like back down on the mat, like you're rolling dough. And before you do anything else, and there's truly no rush, I'm just saying this so that when you get to 20 breaths, you aren't like, now what do I do? Just come into constructive rest and find your knees locked in on one another. Eyes can stay closed. And after you've been in constructive rest for a few breaths, you can lengthen your legs out. And you might feel a lot of sensation in your low back that kind of feels like cramping. And that's okay. It just means that you created a bunch of space in that area and your body's like, whoa, what do I do now? How do I 
have the space in my back to do something with it. So wherever you are right now, just still continue to listen to your breath, listen to your body, taking some deep breaths. So lie wherever you are for like for a minute or two, just letting everything settle down. Letting everything completely release. Winter, and especially before the holidays, are always a crazy time. So taking a minute or two to just lie down and do nothing is amazing. Plus the times we're living in right now are a lot, so we all need more rest. Bring some wiggles back into your fingers and your toes. And then let that movie, movie, let that movement travel up your body so that you roll over onto a fetal position on the left side. Taking a few more breaths in this fetal position, the left side is the side of our hearts and our feelings and the lunar side, so the moon side. Whereas our right side is the side of our liver, the sun, the solar side, and our rationale. So in winter, we're more into our lunacy and our lunar side and our feelings. So just going to the left side today. And then press yourself back up, coming into whatever comfortable seat you started class with. See if you can keep your eyes closed the whole time to keep that sense of inward winter. Palms can be face up or face down on your lap. And just reflecting back here on the past hour. Noticing if you feel exactly the same or different or however you feel. And once again, we'll place one hand on our heart and then the other one on top of it. And we'll take another inhale and exhale together. So find your breath all out on empty. And we'll take a big inhale through the nose. Hold it at the top. And then big sigh, exhale out the mouth. Gratitude to each other to be able to practice together. Gratitude to your mind and body for all that they do together to help us live every single day. Gratitude to yourself for taking the time out of your busy day to give an hour of yoga to yourself. We'll bring our hands to press at the center of our chest and then practice with a final bow. Thank you guys. I'm going to stop the recording. Goodbye, YouTube people.